ghostly plains Some still dream of life Since the sun will rise again I love the colors, the crazy colors and I like that everything is open and there's a lot of light, like these skylights are cool. The whole fact that most of the building is glass, you kind of have this feeling that you're kind of in tune with what's going on in the rest of the school. I've been liking to work in this building because I feel more comfortable because I know it's like our campus. And now it feels like, you know, we can just really excel in what we're doing and there's not really limits because it's our campus. We can really, you know, take it to the next level and make our projects better. And it kind of just feels like this is our school now, yeah. and it would just feel a bit more complete. The first day I came to the school, it felt like a home. I guess it was just because it was such a new school and because they built it especially for us, that we could go up and make our school a gallery of our work. I noticed that the teachers are a little bit more, you know, they're excited and, you know, they want to teach in a new environment. I think it feels great just being in the environment. I told the kids that they should feel very proud and they should take ownership of being one of the first students here at High Tech High Chula Vista. But you can feel that everyone, the students and the teachers, all just feel like we have more of a culture now because we have our own building, because it's, this is us. I mean, we're the first people here. We get to, to make this. By coming here in the early years, you know, I'll be the second class. Uh, I'm able to change the way the school is going to look in the next 10, 15 years. I'll have, you know, say in what's, what's going to be happening in the future. Chula Vista has been amazing. I couldn't ask for a better community to have a school, and they have been super supportive. Parents of our students are, are you know, without question supportive, but people who don't even have kids here are supportive of what we're doing and, and that we're here and wanting to partner with us and having our kids come work on projects there. So it's, and it's been like, you know, literally welcoming us with open arms. For me, the opportunity to take 375 acres in Chula Vista and dedicate it to jobs and to education is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And the very fact that High Tech High was as interested not only to, uh, to live for a short time off campus, but be willing to move your students mid-year and to have an environmental focus. Well, we're thrilled that you're going to be the first occupants of this beautiful piece of property. Give yourselves a great Woo! And I think when a charter high school steps up and says, we're looking at a longer school day, we're looking at a robust program, we're looking at a program that puts students in a community, all those are opportunities that charters have because of differences in the educational codes and in those provisions. In terms of like our school being built though, I think up until this morning, the majority of our families still were like, really? You're really gonna be in there? And you know, so there was, I think they're in shock. We've been working on High Tech High Chula Vista for five years. So we started on a site on uh, Oxford Street, then we moved to a site on E Street, now we've you know, done it on Discovery Falls Drive. This site was very difficult. We had to fill in an 80 foot deep canyon yeah. in order to do it. But uh, things went very well during the grading operations. Unfortunately, we had uh, some time constraints. Yeah. And what we were able to do is, in parallel, do site construction and building construction. So we've fast tracked the project. At the groundbreaking, I saw like nothing. All I saw was hills and things like that. So I was expecting like, oh, this is gonna take forever because I had never heard of prefabrication before. And I found out that the school was being prefabricated like somewhere else. And so that was basically to me, it was like taking Lego blocks, building them somewhere else and then stacking them up at the school. So at first I was like, oh, this isn't gonna get done on time. But when I actually came here, I was like, this is my school. And a point that I wanted to be sure that was observed and recognized is what an important conclusion has come out of the use of modular units in the Chula Vista project. I think the outcome is so functionally appropriate and so aesthetically very attractive at the Chula Vista site that some discussion should be made and some recognition should be made of the people who advocated for and managed the construction process related to this project. 
I think since we're a green school, it really like gives a good representation of what our school's all about and not that just we're learning about green things, but we're actually like applying them. We have a solar electric facility on our roof and that solar electric facility will run 100% of our energy needs for the first two years. After the third year, we're going to have such a large occupant load that it'll, in long term, be about 85% of our electrical needs. I think people don't understand what a big deal the LEED certification is. Being the only chartered high school in the entire state of California that's LEED certified is groundbreaking and is to be utterly commended. We're talking a, a lot right now about building green, about making sure that we conserve energy, that we're very careful about the way we, we, we use water, about the way that we take care of the environment. The ERC is like a greenhouse, but it has many components to it that are more classroom components and also laboratory components. They're not just for growing things. Yeah. And so it's not as if it'll be an acre of poinsettias or something. Yeah. So there'll be a lagoon in there for teaching about closed cell and closed loop biology systems. We're gonna be doing experiments on crop-based technologies for generating fuel. Yeah. And so there are lots of different mini experiments that'll occur within the ERC. Well, I think this is a perfect uh, example of how you can have a, a private-public partnership where you're having the city come together with High Tech High as well as the people who finance High Tech High and be able to create jobs, uh, create educational opportunities, and really set us up for the future. Per square foot, a charter school delivers at about 30% of the cost of a district school. And there's a lot of reasons for that. District schools, they have to meet Davis-Bacon standards for employees. They want to have like 10 acres for an elementary school and 15 acres for a middle school and 25 acres for a high school. Land costs being what they are, that's very high. They're not allowed to be too creative in their engineering, design, and construction because they have to meet various standards that have been developed over the years. So I don't know if a school of this nature, if a district school could build a school of this nature, but I do know they couldn't build it for what you've built it. So, you know, there's not only do you give the kids a good education, but your, your facilities cost is substantially lower. Now that we have our building done, people may say, oh, it's finally finished, but it's not over and I don't think the construction will ever be over because there's always construction going on at our school and there's always things that help the school blossom even more. For more information, visit hitechhigh.org.